All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over some enrichment problems. And I'm going to put them up on the screen right now. So if you are an online student, you can just pause the recording and try these problems on your own. And then when you're ready, you can resume. So here are the four, well, excuse me, five problems. Problem one, you are studying a reaction in lab and determine that a plot of one over concentration versus time is linear, initial concentration, rate constant, concentration after 170 seconds. Number two, studying this reaction given the rate law and the initial concentration, and I wanna know the concentration after this amount of time. Number three, we've got a reaction, we've got a temperature and a rate law at that temperature, and the value of K, and we've got a particular quantity and a particular volume, and I want to know the half-life. And then number four, decomposition. This reaction is known to be first order. And when you look at concentration over time, and we've got a data table, and I want to know the rate constant, half-life, concentration at a certain time, and a time at a certain concentration. So if I were you, I would pause the recording, try these problems on your own, and then when you're ready, resume. Okay, so here they are again to see if you need to pause the recording, jot it down, try it for yourself, and then when you're ready, uh, you can see the answers. Also, for you students who are in my online class, uh, these are also available on the course website. It's, called, it's a file called Integrated Rate Law Enrichment. So you can download this file, print it out, try it on your own, and then look at the answers. A PDF of the answers is also posted on the course website for those of you taking this class online. So now I am going to go over these problems so that you can have a verbal explanation of how these problems work out. So let's go over each one of these. So in problem number one, I'm told, studying this reaction, plot of one over concentration versus time. So in other words, plot time, one over concentration, right? And I get a linear line. So what does that mean? Why is that important information? Well, if you go back to uh, the lecture on the integrated rate laws, one of the things that we talked about in that lecture is how to use graphical analysis to determine if your reaction is zero order, first order, or second order. And so when you are doing a second order test, one over concentration versus time, that's a second order test. And if it's a linear line, that means that that's a positive test, right? So first thing you have to do is determine reaction order, and based on this information, if it's one over concentration versus time, and that gives me a linear line, that means that this is a second order reaction. Okay, and that's important because we can't do these problems unless we know the order of the reaction, because we're gonna be using the integrated rate loss here. So that means that we have to use the second order integrated rate loss. All right, so if we go to our um, reference sheet, the second order integrated rate law will be given on the reference page, one over A or X or whatever you want to call it, equals KT plus one over the initial concentration. Right? This is the initial concentration, this is the concentration at time T. All right, now the problem tells me the initial concentration, so that's this, and here's the value of T. And here's the value of K. So all I'm doing is solving for this quantity right here. All right, so this is what I'm solving for. Now one of the things you have to make sure of before you do any plugging in is make sure that your unit of time here matches your unit of time in K. Because if this is in, say, minutes inverse and this is in hours, you need to convert minutes to hours or hours to minutes because if this unit of time doesn't match the unit of time in K, you'll have a big clash, right? Your problem. You'll have a big problem when you do this uh, solving. 
So 1 over A is equal to 2.3, and that's seconds inverse, right? Uh, times 170 seconds, right? So that's how those two cancel out. Plus 1 over, which is plugging in 1.25 molar. All right. So uh, do a little bit of reduction, reduction. 1 over concentration of A is 391.8. That means that A, I got 0 0.0026, right? Two sig figs, two sig figs. Yep, two sig figs. Units are molarity, moles per liter. Right? Don't forget units because A is a concentration, so it needs units. Either write out moles per liter or put capital M. Also ask yourself if your answer is reasonable. This is the initial concentration. Concentration went down. So yes, that makes sense. If, you're some, if your concentration at some point in the future is higher than what you began with, you know you goofed up, right? Because these are reactants. Their concentrations are going to go down over time. So that's how we do number one. Let's look at number two now. Okay, you're studying this reaction. Rate law is determined to be rate equals 0.08 minutes inverse times concentration of N2O5. Initial concentration is this. What's the concentration after 2.6 minutes? So again, the first thing we need to do is we need to do, determine the reaction order. Because if we don't know reaction order, we can't know which integrated rate law to use. So how do I do that? I wasn't given any information about, you know, a plot here, producing a linear line or anything like that. So I need to have a way to figure out the reaction order. I'm trying to give myself more space to write. So the way we're going to do that is by looking at the rate law, right? The rate law. What's the superscript here? It's one, right? There's no superscript. So that means this is first order. Right? First order. That means we're going to be using the first order integrated rate law. And again, I will give you that on the reference page. You just need to be able to do the arithmetic. Okay? So... First order integrated rate law is can be expressed two different ways. Most students prefer to use this version of it because it's a little more linear. I mean, it is the linear version of it. This is it in slope-intercept form. Okay, so let's see. Initial concentration, so that's this value. And time is right there. And here's the value of K, right? So now we're just plugging and chugging. Again, make sure your unit of time here matches your unit of time here. This is in minutes inverse, this is in minutes. So lucky for me, I don't have to do any conversions. But what if this was in minutes inverse and I asked you the concentration after six hours, right? You need to convert hours to minutes before we plug in. So here we go. Natural log of concentration of N2O5 is equal to negative. That negative is built into the problem. And then there's K, 0 0.080, and that's in minutes inverse, times T, which is 2.6 minutes. So minutes and minutes inverse cancel out, plus the natural log of 0 0.30. Okay. So the natural log of N2O5 is equal to this times this gives me negative 0 0.208. And the natural log of this gives me negative 1.204. So the natural log of N2O5, adding those two quantities, is equal to negative 1.412. How do you get rid of a natural log? Remember your log rules? 
raise both sides to the e because a, a natural log is a logarithm based e, e is Euler's number. So e to the ln n205, that goes away, is equal to e to the negative 1.412. So in your calculator, you should have a button, an e to the x button. My calculator, it's second log, second natural log, excuse me. So that's e to the x. That's how I enter that into my calculator. So when you enter e to the negative 4.12, I get, and round it to two significant figures, I get 0 0.24, right? And that is a concentration. So concentration of N205 is 0 0.24 moles per liter. Is that reasonable? Well, the original concentration was 0.3. It went down, so yes, that makes sense. All right, let's move on to number three. Okay, here's the reaction we're studying. All right, so we're studying this reaction, and we're given the rate law, and we're given some information. We want to know what's the half-life. Okay, so again, the first thing you have to do is you need to figure out order. We're not given any information about plots of concentration versus time or natural log versus time. We're not given any of that information. So the only thing we have to look at is the rate law. The rate law has a superscript of two right here, right? So therefore, this is second order. So we're using the second order integrated rate law, right? Um, and then let's look at what our other information is. One mole of NOCl is introduced to a two liter container. So that's the initial concentration. NOCl initial is 1.0 mole in 2.0 liters, right? So that's 0.5. Five, zero more. And K is given right there. And I want to know what's half-life. Remember, half-life is a unit of time. Half-life is the time it takes for the co initial concentration, or whatever your concentration is, to go down by half. Okay? So we'll be using this kind of stuff when we talk about the kinetics of um, radio radio radioactive decay. That actually follows first order kinetics. But again, a lot of times you think half-life, you think, oh, radiation. But it also works for medicinal, uh, you know, how much time does it take for the, for the drug to go down by one half. So because this is second order, the second order half-life equation. So D one half is equal to one over K times the initial concentration. And again, that'll be given, that's on your reference page, you just need to um, make reference to that. So half-life is one over K. So K has units of 2.8 times 10 to the negative fifth liters per mole second. Okay. And then the initial concentration is 0.5 moles per liter. All right, so let's see. Moles goes away, liters goes away. So that gives me a unit of seconds as my time. So that gives me one second over 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth, which would be 7.1 times 10 to the fourth seconds. Remember that half-life is a unit of time, okay? Unit of time. So that's why we have a unit of time here. All right, last problem. E 
decomposition is known to be first order, so that's nice. We don't have to do any solving for it. We're told it's first order. And we've got some data here. And so we're given time versus concentration. And we want to know K, half-life, concentration of X, concentration of time. X is equal to 0 0.01. So this is a little bit different. So let's go through these. So we can calculate K using any pair, okay? You can use any one of these pairs, okay? Because you've got time, you've got concentration. So pick a pair from the data table here, okay? Uh, I picked one minute and 0 0.0905. That's what I picked, okay? You could have picked any of those other ones. And then we're just gonna plug into First order integrated rate law. Okay, that's all I'm doing. So ln of x is equal to negative kt plus ln x sub zero. Hmm, how do I get the initial concentration? Well, the, oops, that goes outside. The initial concentration is this, right? Because that's the concentration when time equals zero. So that's where that comes from. So natural log of, that's what I picked, 0 0.0905 is equal to K, which is what I'm solving for. And there's my time, which is one minute plus natural log of plugging this in right here. Okay, so I did some rearranging, I did some arithmetic. I'm just gonna skip it because I think you can do it. 0 0.100 minutes inverse. Using the unit of time from the problem. Okay, so now we know K, we just solve for it, 0 0.100 minutes inverse. Now let's go on to the next part of the question, which asks, what's the half-life? Now because this is first order, we know the first order integrated rate law for half-life. Because this is a first order, half-life is equal to the natural log of two over k, right? That's on your reference page. So natural log of two over K, which we just solved for, 0 0.100 minutes inverse. So I got 6.93 minutes. Remember that half-life is a unit of time. Okay, here's that one. Oh shoot, I need to pause the recording here for a second. I just realized that the back page of my notes is missing, so pause. All right, I've got the back page of my notes now. I try to work out these problems in advance so that when I'm making these little videos going over uh, the enrichment problems, you don't just stand there and watch me enter everything in my calculator. Although sometimes that's advantageous. But I think by the time you get to Chem 2, you probably don't want to watch me enter numbers in my calculator anymore. Okay, so we know that this is first order. We know the value of K, I erased it. K is 0 0.01, oops, not 0, 1, 100. And it's inverse, we solved for that in the previous problem. I wanna know the concentration at five minutes. Okay, that's minutes, that's a minutes inverse, so I'm good. If I had asked for, you know, T equals five days, I need to convert days into minutes before I plug in. This is first order, so I'm using the first order integrated rate law, which would be on my reference page. And again, I can do it again. How do I know this initial concentration? This comes from table when T equals zero. 
right? So if I go back to the table, how do I know the initial concentration? The initial concentration is the concentration when time equals zero. Okay. So natural log of x is equal to negative 0 0.100. And it's inverse times five minutes. Minutes cancel plus the natural log of 0.1. And that comes from the table, looking at the table, with the concentration with time equals zero. So the natural log of x is equal to negative 0 0.500 plus negative 2.303, taking the natural log there. So then adding the natural log of x is equal to negative 2.803. How do I get rid of a natural log? Raise both sides to the e, e is Euler's number, e to the ln x, right, that cancels it out, is equal to e to the negative 2.803. So you enter that into your calculator using the button, EX, right? So on my calculator, it's second natural log. So this is a real number, right? This is a real number, just like, you know, 3 pi over 2 is a real number. So just FYI. So that means E to the LN, that goes away. That's like tying your shoe and then untying it. X is equal to E to the negative 2.803, which in my calculator comes out to be 0 0.0606. How many sig figs can I keep? I can actually keep one sig fig because of my time. So that would be 0 0.06. And my units are moles per liter, right? Capital M. Because this is a concentration. All right, last problem. Keep my value of k there so I don't have to keep rewriting it. Last problem. Scroll down a little bit. There we go. How much time does it take to get to a concentration of 0 0.01 molar is what I'm asking here, right? How much time is it going to take for the concentration to reach 0 0.01? That's what I'm doing. So again, we're using first order integrated rate law. This comes from the table, right? This is when t equals zero. So now we're solving for t. So natural log of 0 0.0100 is equal to negative 0 0.100 minutes inverse times t plus natural log from the table we get the concentration when time was 0 0.1 so natural log of this is negative 4.605 is equal to negative 0 0.100 t plus natural log of this negative 2.303 all right, now we're just going to do a little bit of algebra. Minus negative 2.303. Minus negative 2.303. So I got negative 2.302 is equal to negative 0.100t. All right, divide both sides by negative 0 0.100. Divided by 0 0.100. So t is equal to 23. How do I know the unit of time? Comes from the concentrate, it comes from the rate, rate constant, right? So that'd be min, minutes. Right? So in 23 minutes after the reaction begins, the concentration will be 0 0.01 moles per liter. All right, so those are the problems for the enrichment. Again, there's a PDF of this posted on the course website. If you have questions, you're always welcome to come see me during office hours or email me. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next time.